Some of you will know Vicky, um, who's been um, a staple in the community uh, for some time. Uh, uh, she's a, a certified uh, Salesforce um, instructor and also a Salesforce architect. So um, Vicky uh, has joined us to talk about um, trying to get um, more Salesforce certifications or getting past a blockage you may have with uh, the Salesforce certification that's in your site. So yeah, I'd like to hand over to you, Vicky. Thank you for waiting patiently for us. Oh, no problem. I was learning things too, so I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> that's always good. I'll stop sharing for you, Vicky, and then, uh, then you can share. Oh, cool. Let me go ahead and share this and let me know if it's, uh, if it shows up okay for everybody. All yep. set? We can cool. see that. Yeah, thank you. Oh, awesome. So hi, everybody. I know a lot of faces here, but some new ones too. So I don't think I know everybody. And uh, I can't see everybody in the room. I wish I was there. But um, unfortunately, I'm a little bit farther away and not coming into London until next week. So I <laughs> couldn't get away earlier than that. Um, just uh well i'll be presenting uh on from stuck to certified my top 10 tips for passing certifications because as a certified instructor this is a conversation that i have over and over again in all of the different classes that i teach and just uh really with people in the community as well around like uh like paul said the blockers to getting certified what are the things that get us stuck up because as you start to take certifications, you'll find that the one certification, um, your first one is probably always the hardest. And then it gets a little bit easier after that. Not technically all the time, but at least the exam part and knowing what you're getting yourself into gets easier. So I have a little intro here. Um, I think Paul did a really good job of introing for me though, so I won't spend much time here. But I've been through the, the certification path 19 times now myself. And I'm also a three times mom. So um, I was just trying to get the kids to stop screaming downstairs before coming up to give the presentation. But uh, they probably keep me the busiest out of them all. So just a quick, I know I'm not in the room, so it's hard to see this, but is anybody planning on taking their first certification here? Or has everybody been around to the block a couple of times? Yeah, there's a few that have been around the block uh, a few times here. I think we've got one person uh, actually know that. that yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, sometimes the hardest part is getting started. So um, this is from, oh, I didn't update this one. I had updated it. It must not have saved. I apologize for that. There's a newer one that Salesforce Ben has out. And uh, it shows all of the different certification paths. So you can see this is from 2021. That means there's certifications that have come out since then that are not here. And it's huge. There's something like 40, 50 certifications out there. And um, finding the right path is really hard. So that's going to be the first thing. There's so many different things out there. It's easy to get distracted by all of those shiny new certs and these shiny new things that we're seeing. But um, actually picking your certification path and following one down is a, a really important place to go. So it might be that you start up here and you're going through the consultant certs. Um, where's my consultant certs up here? They're somewhere down here. So you might be going through the consultant certs. You might decide that you'd like to go into the marketing side or that you'd like to go down the developer track. But it really does help to choose a path. And maybe you kind of go back and forth in between two. That's OK. But definitely not more than that. You want to make sure that you're spending the time that you are able to soak it all in. And then my next tip, and I am going to try to go through these kind of quick, but leave it open for plenty of questions at the end too. Feel free to throw any in the chat if you do. And uh, the next tip is to set a goal because we're all human. And I feel like I say that a lot, like we're all human beings at the end of the day. We like to procrastinate. That's just a natural tendency with the human species is that we procrastinate if we don't have a hard set goal that we're working towards. So book in your exams. I see a couple of people in the chat have done that already. That is good. But um, 
it's easy to put things off and just to let life take over if you don't have a hard date in the calendar. So I know I'll book in exams. I have a couple um, sitting there booked in my calendar for maybe six months down the road, but at least it's there. And at least it's I can work towards it. And then if you're not ready for it, you can push them back. Just make sure that you don't wait too long. I think it's 24 hours before online and then three days before on site. Double check that. But uh, do make sure that you're um, setting that goal, working towards it. And then if life throws things at you, you can be kind with yourself. You can push it back. But at least you've got that hard set goal that you're working towards. And also we've updated from Sentinel. So make sure you have the right software on your computer and that you have your biometric profile. If you are taking the test online, it'll just save you a headache, give yourself plenty of time to do that so you don't have to deal with any tech issues. So tip number three, get really friendly with your exam guides. Now this is something that I was guilty of definitely, was going in, we all know Trailhead, or hopefully we all know Trailhead. Um, we head on into Trailhead, we go to the exam guide website the here, we even see the trail mix down below, and then we never come back in here again. Because you made your study plan, you maybe jotted down all of the bullet points that you don't know or something like that. And then I would go back into this when I was mentoring people or when I would start to teach a class and go, oh, they must have changed that exam because I do not remember seeing that, that, and that there. And it is because as we're learning, we're going to read these differently when we come back in. So make a point of coming into the exam guide a couple times before the exam as you're going through just to make sure that we're staying on scope, that we're looking at the right thing in the first place. Now, tip number four, kind of cruising through, is uh, get familiar with the types of questions. And this is where Salesforce exams can be tricky. So if you've been around the block, you might already know this, but it's multiple choice questions. You get some choose two, choose three thrown in there, and there's no partial credit. It's not like in school um, where we got partial credit, the teacher would be nice to us sometimes, criterion not so nice. So make sure to read the questions thoroughly. And if it's a particularly long question, I always like to mark it for review. So you've got a little checkbox at the bottom of all of your questions, and you can really utilize that checkbox to your benefit. You want to go through at a nice speed. This is a timed exam. It's a marathon. So you want to make sure that you're not missing out on maybe a couple easy questions at the end because you just didn't make it there. So keep going through, mark questions for review that you don't know, and then also mark them for review if they're really long or if the scenario is really complicated. Because sometimes when you hit the end of the exam, you just start to breathe again. And um, you realize that, hey, I might have some extra time on the clock. You can go back, you can review all of those questions in there. So I know that especially as you get to like the crazy architect certs, they like to make really, really long questions in there make sure to use that mark for review. You might just read one sentence or one word that changes the entire answer for you. Go with your gut too. Your gut always knows um, more than you think it does. Yeah, just like with our quiz tonight. Summer solstice sounds right. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, tip number five, halfway point, is taking advantage of everything that is out there. And this is kind of that catch-22 situation because there's so much out there that it can get overwhelming sometimes. So make sure you're staying on scope for the exam. That's where you can come back to the exam guideline uh, guide. You can just make sure that you're not uh, getting too far off the beaten path. But uh, do take advantage of everything that's out there. There's mock exams out there. There's the certification trail mixes. There's some other ones. Um, I think we all probably know for focus on for sales for spen. Um, just make sure that you don't use exam dumps because not only are they illegal, but they're also prone to human error because again, coming back to this uh, common sentiment that we are all human beings at the end of the day. Um, when you have an exam dump, it's people trying to just get everything out of their mind and our minds don't exactly remember stuff the right way sometimes. So just by definition, they can be uh, relatively faulty there. 
Do feel free after an exam though to write your thoughts down. So if you had a topic that was on the exam and you said, well, I really am not sure of the answer to that. I always try to retain them. I maybe retain half of them. <laughs> If that's when I'm coming through, it, it all just goes out the window when you see either that pass or fail. But do uh, try to jot it down afterwards because that might help you to study um, for yourself going forward too. Now, this is um, one thing that I have on a couple of my presentations coming up. I like to include it all over the place, the learning curve. So if you've never seen this before, this is what the learning process looks for us. So a lot of times we think that we learn and it's like this linear line that we're learning more, so more stuff is going into our brains. So it just has to be that line that just keeps going up. Where actually learning happens in this kind of up and down plateau where we have, this seems fun. And then we get down here, we're like, okay, I don't know what I was doing. This is really hard. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I'm kind of uh, almost like riding a bike, like you're pedaling along. You don't really know how you're doing it, but you're getting somewhere. And then I've got it. And then you'll have that moment of, I know nothing. And then maybe you'll get towards getting a certification or something like that. We're never gonna know it all though. So this will be a constant process of up and down. And sometimes when you realize that, it really does help to just be a little bit kinder with ourselves as we are taking it all in, knowing that even when you feel like you're down here, things are still happening in your brain. We're creating all of these different synapses, we're retaining information, and um, we have to see things over and over again before it actually sinks in. So I think you have to see something around eight times before um, it actually sinks in. And mock exams, are a really great way to be able to figure out what we know and what we don't know. What's my knowledge gaps? What do I need to fill in a little bit more? And what's my strengths? What do I have? I don't need to really spend my time reviewing that. And what do I still need to keep going for? And this is where consistency is key because the way our brains work, we create all of these synapses when we learn something new. And um, as soon as we have that little piece of information in our, in our brain, our brain creates this pathway to it. And the first time that we go down that pathway, it's kind of like the first time that you go to the mailbox after a really deep snow. It's really hard to plunge through to get there. And the more times you go down that path, the more worn down the snow gets and the easier it gets to get to your mailbox or to get to that piece of knowledge. So um, I actually stole that from Lilith Van Beeson. You can credit her for that one. <laughs> but uh, it is that uh, really repetitive piece that we need to have when we're learning new things. Now, um, I am not sponsored by Staples or any other um, office good <laughs> store. I should be, but I'm not. I love flashcards. So uh, this was what I did for my very first exam when I was taking my admin exam. I was an English teacher way back in the day and um, was learning Salesforce. And I had this stack of flashcards where I would write the topic down on one side and what I think the question might be on or the things that the answers on the other side of the flashcard. And by doing that, you're creating questions and basically a mini mock exam for yourself. And you're soaking in the information a little bit when you're writing it down. And then I would carry those things around with me all the time. I was that crazy lady at the grocery store who would be sitting there. I only had one kid at the time, but I would be sitting there with my one kid in the, um, in the shopping cart, get to the cash register, and she would fall asleep each and every time. So that was uh, my moment to study. And she was asleep at the cash register, I would be there flipping through all of my different note cards and my index cards. Just always had them on my person and that way I could study, I could review, and when I got comfortable with one, I'd take it out. And that's why I like physical flashcards to this day more than the virtual ones because as that deck thins down, that's when I started to feel more confident because there's so much to learn. It's really hard to feel prepared for an exam. But if you see a flashcard deck dwindling down, you might say, okay, I'm getting there. I can see my progress and um, I might wanna try that exam now. 
get hands-on too. So we all have different learning types. Um, I actually have a blog on Salesforce, Ben. I'll try to get that and share it with everybody later. I forgot to put it in this presentation, but we all have different learning types. Some of us are visual learners. Some of us are what we call kinesthetic or hands-on learners. And for those of us who are hands-on learners, it really does help to get hands-on. So check to see if there's a super badge, if there is a trail mix, the prepare for and the study for are always really good ones for the exam. Study for is just means that it's those flashcards that you can flip over and some practice questions where the prepare for is like that full uh, trailhead trail mix. And find a study buddy. It doesn't have to be somebody that you're sitting down and studying with, but just an accountability buddy. I know that um, my accountability buddy was uh, Brooke Bracey, who moved from Open English into Salesforce with me. And we would slack each other questions all the time as we were studying. And we had a little competition going as well and um, got very competitive. <laughs> I think all of us uh, in the trailhead world have a tendency of having that competitive spirit. And we got a little game going on. So we would go through our trailhead modules, we'd bounce ideas or questions off of each other, and just that little motivation to keep going. So if you know somebody else who's studying for an exam, especially if it's the same one as you, go ahead and encourage each other along. And then try it out for your own. I have a dev org um, that I use for all kinds of things like my learning journey and things like that. Um, I track my trailhead modules. I track all kinds of stuff, how many students I've taught over time. And by doing that, you'll be playing with the functionality and actually using it too. So you get to experience the end user side that if we're always building things, we don't always see. And I know that one was a uh, key for like the data architect, the secure sharing and visibility. If anybody's thinking of going down those, really getting your hands dirty, testing it out and seeing the functionality come to life in the platform is, um, I, I feel like it's always so much more helpful than just going through help documentation and trailhead modules. It's that nice complement to each other. And then do make a study plan. So we're getting towards the end of the tips here. Tip nine, make a study plan. This is my general study plan. So this is on a good day. <laughs> um, sometimes we have so much stuff going on that this isn't always possible. But around a, um, over a month before, I'll maybe take a class, I'll study on Trailhead. I like to go on to Trailhead because it gives you the why behind the functionality really nicely. All of what I like to affectionately call the fluff. You get the story, you get the, why would people use this in the first place? How is it used? Do your mock exams, read all kinds of things. I know that my social media channels are actually full of just Salesforce. So I have Twitter, I have LinkedIn. Um, those are my two social media channels for Salesforce related stuff. And it's all of the great blog posts and all of the great ideas out there. So um, yeah, you do get a lot from reading different resources as well. And you're here, so listening to presentations like we do here, look, going into community groups, there's so much out there. Make your flashcards. And then two to three weeks before, really hone in on your weakest areas because that's not where you're going to have all of this time to be studying everything on the exam. Just really focus on the weak areas. I switch over from trailhead to help documentation because this is the point in time where I just want the down and dirty. I want to know what the functionality is, what it does, what the considerations are. And I don't want any of the fluff at this point because I don't have a whole lot of time before the exam. So I just want this really um, straightforward help documentation. Exams, more flashcards, and then the week before, Take a step back. You can come back to the flashcards a bit. You can do some um, visualization. That's a really great technique of just seeing yourself passing the exam or seeing yourself take the exam. You can kind of do that in your head sometimes of thinking of what the exam questions might be or focusing on just one or two topics that you might still be struggling with. But honestly, that's not where you're going to learn enough that it's going to be necessarily a make or break. And that's where my last tip comes from. So we've got Astra says relax here. <laughs> this little like a Zen fic picture of Astra. 
the day before, just rest and relax. And that can even be a couple of days before because like I said, cramming things in the day before, that's not where it's going to be the make or break, whether you pass or fail an exam. Your time's actually better spent putting yourself into a good test-taking mindset instead. So taking a step back, relaxing, doing whatever is enjoyable to you. So for me, it's going out on a hike, maybe some family time, reading a good book, um, maybe doing some yoga or something like that. But whatever is your happy moment, it might be playing video games, it might be what, whatever makes you calm and relaxed and just helps you to di disconnect there a bit. And then also take care of your physical self. So um, make sure to get enough sleep if you can. Um, that being said, I've taken exams uh, while very pregnant and just after having kids sometimes, and that's not always possible, but uh, give it a try. And make sure to do things like staying hydrated, drink a lot of water the day before, eat a healthy meals. All of that stuff is really going to put your brain in a good space to passing an exam. And these are all the types of tips that I remember learning from maybe middle school, high school, as we started to learn how to take exams in the first place. But sometimes we forget them as we come through. So just uh, really thinking of the brain as just part of our body, an organ on its own. And then on exam day, stretch before the exam. I like to take all of mine at home because I'm two and a half hours away from the nearest testing site. So there's uh, no way I'm driving that far <laughs> to take a Salesforce exam. But uh, take a walk around the block or walk around the testing center. Just stretch it out a bit. You'll be sitting for a while, so um, might as well get a good stretch in. Give yourself plenty of time to get there or to get connected. And then breathe. So um, there's a box breathing technique. And I don't think the link copied over here. But uh, it's used by the military, the Marines in the US. And also, it's a yoga technique. So if these two very different spaces are using it, it's got to be good. And it's this idea of breathing in on account of three, four, however that might be, holding your breath for four, letting it go for four, and then holding it for four. And I've actually done this on exams. So when you get really stressed out, when you're just feeling like you're overwhelmed completely, you have this clock counting down in front of you. Those 30 seconds that it takes you to just remember to breathe and do this will help you to calm your nervous system. It helps you to refocus back in on the questions and it'll actually help you to gain time rather than just going with like the monkey mind that keeps going and thinking a mile a moment a minute and uh, might be hindering you as you go down your exam. Now, this is probably um, the most important. Not passing is only failing if it holds you back. It's a really tricky exam. So that goes for whatever exam that you're on. All of them are really tricky. So I like this quote down here. Don't worry about failures. Worry about the chances you miss when you don't even try. You're never going to feel ready when you fail an exam that really throws you for a loop. I failed them before. It's not fun. Take a couple of days, you can hate Salesforce, you can hate the platform as much as you'd like, and then get back up on the horse, book the exam, and usually for two, three weeks later so that you're not losing all of that awesome information you've got in your head, but you're giving yourself time to fill in your knowledge gaps. Use that summary um, that you get back as well that uh, tells you how well you scored on each section. That can be your guiding light, so finding out really what you need to study. I did put a link in here, so I will uh, throw this into the chat. I did not forget this one. It's a really good blog article around uh, exam failing, <laughs> the art of exam failing, I feel like it should be. And that's it. So I know we went over a little bit. Thanks everybody for hanging in there with me. And how's everybody feeling? Any questions? Any Everybody planning on taking exams? I have two books this month, so this is really good timing. Yeah. <laughs> Did I hear two? Yes, two. Yeah, one person got two books for for this month. Other Debbie. Oh, nice. And, De and the other Debbie in the room's got uh, one in the summer too. Yeah. Oh, nice. Awesome. You'll have to share with us how it goes.